Hi, I'm Ed. Today we're going to paint Monet's Flowers on the Banks of the Seine. So let's get cracking. Okay, so the best way to approach this is we're going to put uh, a wash on the background and we're going to, probably not as you might expect, we're going to, um, we're going to do a sort of orangey coloured wash. So it's a summer's day or it's a spring day and we need to make it warm from behind. So um, let's just start. We're going to actually break this painting down into two sections. So this is the first section. Um, as usual, we're using water, uh, acrylic paints which is water-based, just all the primary colours are fine. So to start off with, we've just got some yellow with a tiny bit of red and quite a bit of water to do this orange wash. And we're literally just going to get this colour going all the way through, all the way in the background. I don't care how it looks like, I don't care if I can see the brush strokes. We just need to fill the canvas. Doesn't matter if it drips down like that, that's fine. We're literally just filling the canvas. So more paint. The opposite colour uh, of blue, like light blue, is this orangey colour. So when we put the light blue on top of here, you just see a bit of orange coming through and it'll make the painting uh, kind of pop. So loads of paint. We're going to use a couple of different brushes, one big one and one small one. We're on the big one at the moment. It's going pretty well so far. It's easy. Easy peasy. There we go. We're just colouring all this in. You need to save money on framing by painting around the outsides. Always. There we go. Bit more paint, more yellow, tiny bit of red. I would say to get this orange, you want, I don't know, 10% red in your yellow, something like that. And you put it on thin. There right, we go, a bit on there. It's always a good place to start, fill the whole canvas with paint. There we go. You don't need to go quite as fast as I'm going. You can take your time. You've got all day. Um, I'm just going to crack on, do it. There we go. We're nearly there. Stage one almost complete. Now, before we go on to the next little bit, we need to let this dry out, but uh, it's going to take maybe a whole minute, something like that. If you want to speed up the process, you can get hair dryer on it, uh, or you can just rub it in. So like the drips are going to get all blended in. Use your hand or use a tissue if you want. There we go. Just like that. Did I paint the other side? That's enough. There's enough on there. Okay. So the next kind of stage, we need to do a little bit of measuring out. So we're going to paint the horizon in first, in like a light blue. So like the hills past this line of trees are really kind of light blue. Um, that's the colour we need to start off with. In fact, we're going to paint a lot of light blue all over this, but we need to find that horizon line, which actually is a quarter of the way down the canvas. So. Kind of, that's a bit high, isn't it? It's a bit high, probably quarters there. Just wait for this to dry a second and then we can go. So if that's halfway, that's your quarter line there. Um, things to sort of take notes on are the direction of the brush strokes. So pretty much all of the brush strokes in this Monet at the, in the top, say two thirds, where it's sky and where it's you know, the reflections on the, on, the, on the river, they're all horizontal strokes like that. So that, you bear that in mind when we get going, when this is nearly dry, 
all horizontal strokes. And we're going to like tiny little, I'm going to rush it a little bit. Uh, you want to be using maybe like centimetre long brush strokes, loads of them, light blue, light purple, white, and then same again, like pile them all on top of each other. The more brush strokes you do, and the more sort of diverse the tones of it, um, the better painter, the better painting you'll end up with. Right, that's dry, easy. So get a clean brush. If you don't get a, a clean brush, you'll end up with a green kind of uh, hillside. We don't want that. We want we want a light purple, uh, a light blue. So we need some white paint and some light blue. Just mix up this colour here, and then we can go straight in. We need a tiny bit of. There's quite a bit of texture in this. So, although now I'm going to put this through, uh, we're going to do this line and it's going to be kind of quite, quite flat. Later on, we're going to put loads of paint on. So we're going to be like half scooping it in and dabbing it. Where you dab it, you leave it. Because this is actually quite, you can hear that. It's quite, uh, there's quite a lot of texture in there. Okay, this is definitely dry. We've got our blue. We've got our blue, here we go. Here goes nothing. It's already bouncing off. There was, it looks quite good. And those tiny little bits of, those tiny little bits of orange that are through there, that's what we're after. Okay, here we go. It doesn't have to be perfect. It does have to be a quarter of the way up, but it doesn't have to be perfect because we've got some trees in front of this. It's all going to be pretty easy. If it's going straight away green, it means this isn't dry yet. So just wait another couple of minutes and make sure you've got a clean brush and it'll go on, it'll go on top. Fine. So that's it. And then, so that's this line here in the background of the trees. We're going to go dark blue on top, but that's that. Paint around the edges. And now we are off and running. You need white paint, light blue paint, tiny bit of purple, but mixed in with the white. So you'll end up with like loads of different um, sort of tones of blue and lilac and, um, and then we're away. Remember, we've got to do these tiny little brush strokes like this. So they're all the same. We don't want that. All the same, we'll just end up with really flat. So you've got this mid-tone here, add some white. So now that's lighter than that, and then we'll add some blue. And then that's darker than that, and that's what we're after. Loads of, although it's predominantly light, we just don't want one block of colour. So here we go. These bits are a bit dark. And look, it's gone a bit green. Not to worry. We're going to keep painting and painting and painting. Loads and loads of paint on this. This stuff is going to dry in like, even though we're putting it on quite thick, it'll dry really quickly. Um, so yeah, we're just going to keep going. Kind of commit to your brush stroke. So by that I mean, don't rub it in like this. So you've got some paint on your brush. Don't, don't do this because it'll just end up kind of going brown and rubbish. Um, do you want to say commit to it? You get a bit of paint on your brush and you go, Doof, it's done, Doof, it's done, Doof. You can use big brush or small brush. I'm using big because we've got quite a bit to do. So I'm just like covering the canvas, but you can take as long as you like. Um, just sort of dabbing it and touching it as it goes like this. Okay, you'll see that we've got some nice differentials in tone, but this needs to be um, quite a lot lighter. So but what we're gonna, we're gonna put on the white a bit later on, but we just need to crack on and fill the canvas. We haven't forgotten about this is our horizon, but we do need to get loads of paint on. So kind of scoop it up, get enough on. Scoop it up. You can mix the paint on the canvas rather than in here. So if you've got a little bit of purple on there, and then a little bit of light blue, 
then you can get going and it's mixing the paint on the canvas so like you can see in here you've got I don't know maybe eight different colors like literally in that bit there or shades if you mixed it all if you mixed it all on your canvas so say you're doing that you're mixing it all on your canvas you've got one color so that's why you just pick up a little bit of each And it's good for texture because we're going to get that great effect of uh, impasto painting. That means you can see the brush stroke and it's put on really thick. So I'm going to crack on and do this. So I'm just painting on top, on top, on top, and I'm not rubbing it all in. Here's some more paint. There we go, right. Let's keep going, keep going. And at the same time, we're going to be doing the reflection of all of this. It's literally, it's just, re it's repeated, obviously straight underneath. And the brush strokes, even more important than going this direction in the sky, they really have got to go this direction on top of the river. So whilst you're doing this, in order to get a good sort of match on reflection, just, it's the same. It's literally just, a, it's the same. Same. Here we go. So it's the same sort of thing. There you go, right? I need some more white. I need some more white. So you'll notice I haven't got any um, kind of really expensive paint. It's like any paint will do. As long as it's water-based, you can get it from like the hardware shop. Excuse me. Oh, here we go. There's quite a lot of white on here. We can do, we're going to do these banks here later on. So just for now, just keep filling it in. So what you've got here, you want here. So there is also there. There is there. There is there. There is there. We don't really want much differential in between this and this. It's kind of the same thing. It's just a straight reflection of... Um, see my big brush strokes here? You want to go smaller. You want to go like this big. Loads of them. They're beautiful. If you're feeling super lazy, uh, sort of five brushes of five brushes are, uh, or four brushes, are quicker than one. So once you've got loads of paint on, don't forget I've got to go up here, haven't I? and then down there, and then up here, and then down there. So we get the right kind of mixtures going on. So yeah, what I was saying, the um, five brushes are quicker than one. So you can just go, there's well, four brushes, we've got four brushes. So that would take ages to do that. It's really quick, it's really, really quick. It's cheating, it's not cheating. And you can just see the little bits of yellow and orange coming through just sort of helps to warm up the painting. I'm going to go, you don't have to do this, I'm doing it because I'm, well, lazy and trying to get it done quick. Um, you can use, you know, little brushes and you can take all day doing it. There we go. But it's kind of building up, like lots of different, loads of different tones and textures. I'm not sure Monet used his fingers, but he should have if he was trying to save time. Right, more paint. Get loads of paint, really sort of scoop it on. So it's all kind of just dripping off like that. Loads of paint. More of this, more of this. You can't use enough paint. You just can't use enough paint. So we go more on, put it on super thick. There we go. And we're going to go all the way down here, sort of, so the river, you know, the reflections are coming all the way down. The second half of this, that's where we, uh, we do all the sort of flora and fauna. The brush strokes are pretty much vertical for all of the, um, you know, for all of the strands and stalks of one of the flowers. Apart from there'll be a few, there'll be a few flowers that because the way you're looking at them, you're seeing like a cross section of flowers. So they will actually, they probably will end up about that shape. But anyway, we'll go into that later. 
Is it all looking a bit purple? If it is, don't worry. Loads more paint. Um, put some blues in. I've got two different blues. I've got a light blue and a dark blue. It doesn't really matter too much. So it's predominantly the whole thing's white. Um, yeah. There we go. So we can still see our background. We can still see our horizon just about still there. We're just really knocking out all of that, uh, almost, almost all of the, of the yellow. I know we're painting around the sides. Forgot. There we go. Paint on this side. You can't see this side, so it won't bother. There we go. Oh, more paint required. You can't have enough paint on a Monet. Turner's different because it's all watercolour. Well, it's not all watercolours, but it's all like washes and glazes and glazes and glazes. But Monet, he slapped it on. There we go. I'm going to have to go in again. But look, so I picked up some red from somewhere. It's gone a bit pink. Don't matter. Do, 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 do. Right here. There. So I'm mixing all the colours actually on the, on the canvas as opposed to on the palette. And if there are a few bits that you think are too dark, don't try scraping them off, just put some white on top. Yeah, look, we're nearly there. We're nearly there with... Um... You can't really spend too long doing this. It's, it's almost impossible. Oh, hello, There's some red gone in. How did that happen? Don't matter. We'll just paint over it. Yeah, you can't spend too long doing it. Because the longer you do it, the more paint you've got on, the more texture you'll have, and it'll be a greater painting. Um, generally speaking, to get another kind of illusion of depth, the paint wants to be thicker, a lot thicker at the bottom of the canvas. So when we're doing the, later on, when we're doing these like flowers and whatnot, get loads on because it just helps, you know, things closer towards you have got more depth, they're thicker. Um, yeah, so just sort of remember that for later. Um, right, we're nearly kind of, we're nearly there. Right, so I've got enough paint on. I've been using big brush. You should be using, pro you can use big brush or you can use small brush, but really the, the brush stroke sh sh should be a little bit smaller. So cheating, I'm going to use my little, my four little brushes and just do this. And it makes it look like I spent ages doing this. So don't tell anyone. That's it. And I'm dabbing it on. I'm not just, mush, I'm not meshing it all together. I'm dabbing it on like you would do a brush. And it's always left to right. Oh yeah, I need some up there because it's the same colour I forgot. So whatever's up there, let's go over down there. It's looking good, isn't it? It's looking good at this. Okay, so you can keep doing that forever and feel free. But I haven't got forever. So what I need to do is like move on to. You'll see that this uh, we'll see that this needs to be a bit whiter, lighter. But we do need to try and get get the um, get the horizon in. So the way we're going to do that is you don't really need to clean your brush massively. Just give it a bit of a wipe. It'll be fine. And then get loads of white paint, more white paint. And um, we're kind of going to cut in. We're going to cut in from the top and try and get this straight-ish, but it doesn't have to be totally straight line here. And then another line coming in underneath. So we're doing the top line in here slightly wavy because it's hills and then this line here should be pretty straight but with that we're just going to use white there we go that's why i use cheap paint because i use loads of it and i'm quite tight here we go so we'll go in from the top um, if you're trying to do something that's detailed as in or you want a straightish line 
and I'm, I'm wanting a line that's going to go on like this. Go in, go in from the top, as in you won't get a straight line on top of this going in from the bottom or really here. But you can get a really straight line, you can get a paint whatever I like in there. See, so look at that, that's quite cool, isn't it? Going from that angle. And don't forget, we're still going dabby. Still going dabby. Maybe a little bit further down. So then you can sort of see, like you can sort of see the hillside in the distance. I mean, that's like some sort of, I don't know, we need to make it a little bit more rolling hills rather than mountain range, but anyway. So that's the general crack. So we're getting in there, and then same all the way along. Wherever you think that your hillsides might want to be. That's it. Loads of paint, loads of paint. Get in there like that. And don't forget, top of the brush at the top, so you can really get this line straight. It doesn't want to be coming down like this. It's just got to be, it's got to be fairly horizontal, but like roughly horizontal. And then when we do the... Um, that's it. Now, same theory. It's that random, you don't need to look. You can just paint like that, it doesn't matter really. As long as you can't... That's how random. So look, that's even better. Random's good. Um, same sort of thing from the, from the bottom for the, uh, for the back of the river. We're coming in from the bottom side like that. We'll put, in these, we'll put in these banks in a little bit, but for now we've got the... Try and cover up the rest of the yellow. Things in the distance, generally speaking, are blue and white. Because it all fades off into the distance. If you've got some really big um, uh, brush strokes right in the, uh, in the far distance, you might be better just sort of rubbing over them a little bit. You still want some texture um, and tone. But if you've got, for instance, that in the background, it's just going to look weird. It's fine in the foreground because the, you know, the ripples are bigger. But in the background, it's not good. So you can either just blend them in with your finger and then that's cool, like that. Um, yeah, kind of keep going. Just put more paint on, more paint on. We don't really want big areas of uh, orange showing through now. But just little bits poking through help for kind of general like warmth of the, um, of the thing. Right, okay, next step, where are we? So that's sort of mimicking that. What we're going to do is the easy way to paint these trees will be to use the light blue colour again. Um, maybe with a little bit of white. And then, so we'll do, you can see in here where it's really light blue, we're going to do that. And then on top, we'll use a darker blue, maybe some purple light, right at the end to, to bring, them, bring them out a little bit. So um, use your reference. You might be able to find one of these on the internet. Uh, but this is one that I took a photograph of my painting, honestly. And um, you can just sort of count the trees in from left to right. Um, or if you're left-handed, go, le go, uh, go right to left. So, literally in this colour blue, in this light blue, that's a bush. It's done. You don't need to really carry on. It's an impressionist painting, so you're, when you're looking at it, it's going to be... Um, when you're looking at it close up, it's going to look more abstract than it is from far away. And also, when he painted this, it was a, quite, it was, it was a bigger thing and meant to be sort of viewed from a distance. So. Don't panic if you're thinking, oh, that doesn't look like a bush. From over there, it will. So, uh, okay, just, move, just sort of moving along. We've got one little one. Make sure it joins up with the, uh, with the horizon. And you've got one big one. Then there's a little one. Then there's a bush. There's another bush. Uh, then there's, uh, let's make sure roughly speaking, that these ones here are actually twice the height of this. So they're probably up to there. Something like that. A bit more paint. Uh, and then there's a skinny one. And then there's a big one. And then there's a little bush. And then there's another bush. Doesn't matter. So nature, it doesn't really matter. You can have, you can have a bush there and a bush. It doesn't matter. But as so long as they're sort of roughly 
roughly joined up at the bottom. Okay, and then there's a few more. You can put as many in as you want. Um, I reckon Monet, genius. Um, these trees probably weren't exactly like this. He's put them in such a way to make a decent composition. So, um, like, bear that in mind. That it doesn't, obviously, artistic license is uh, a good thing. Here we go. Right, Dush, those in there. A couple more. And one thick one. And then maybe, yeah, so if he, he's done it, look, so if there's quite a large tree there just balances it all out. If there was nothing there, it would sort of run off and the composition wouldn't be as good. So, and then maybe like two little ones there or something. Right, that's it. Now, these colours, since we're on the blue and we're going to use so many colours and what build it up and build it up, whilst we've got a load of blue on the go, we may as well use it for uh, down here, for texture. Don't have to look at it too much. We're just using, we're just using loads of paint and it's for texture. And we'll cover most of it up, but there has to be some of it in there. We may as well do it now, because we're already on the blue. Um, notice, I said before, like, they're going vertical on this. So that's it, like that. You don't have to do loads and loads and loads, but definitely some, and gradually, we're knocking down that orange kind of background but we're still letting some of it shine through. So that's good. So, so far we've been, what have we done? We've used, just, we're just on the blues aren't we? Amazing. Um, this stuff's just drying out a little bit. Oh look what we've forgotten. Sh oh reflections. Same blue. Same blue. Um, direct, it's got to, they're not going to work if uh, the reflection of this tree is over here. It's got to be absolutely slap bang underneath it. But it doesn't want to be painted vertically because it's sat on top of the river. It's the reflections. It's got to be painted horizontally. And sketchily, it's also got to be... Uh, yeah. I was going to say it had to be the same height, but not necessarily. It's just got to be directly underneath. So we can do those. Do those. That's it. Same with these ones. The really small trees, they're not going to be that sort of pronounced. It's not going to be an exact mirror image, but there does need to be something underneath. Uh, horizontally again. There we go, so that's that. Uh, spend more time than I just did. Kind of rushed it. I was lucky. It works out all right. That's it. Some more over there. Right, cracking. Um, yeah, I mean, where are we? We've got loads of texture on. It's looking pretty good. We're gonna, we've got some quite thick paint down here. We know where our brush strokes are going, up and down. What can we do? We can use, um, yeah, probably get a small brush. Small brush now for the details. So, or if you're very brave, use the big brush. But go small brush. To make a small brush sharp, you just, um, you just pinch it like that. So a bit later on, you'll be going, oh, I haven't, can't get the detail. Just pinch it with your fingers. Don't be shy, getting your fingers messy. It doesn't matter. Just pinch it like that. So we're going on top of these trees again in the distance. We're going dark blue. We've been using light blue. So use the darker blue. And it's really sketchy. You don't really want to see you want to see loads of um, sort of light and dark, so dark blue and then light blue. So you want to be really kind of sketchy like that. So, so uh, a very shaky hand is a good thing for this. Oh. Yeah, there we go. Oh, that's it. Uh, there we go, look. So we're letting a little bit of that lighter blue sort of shine through, because I think it's looking like the sun's over there, it's behind us, so it's almost like a backlit, backlit kind of thing. They all, they've got to sort of join up, but we don't join them up with a, solid, with a solid line. It's sketchy, it's really sketchy. There, look. If you look at this close up, you'll think, rubbish. But from a distance, 
it's going to look pretty cool. Yeah. There we go. Right, so the same thing on these trees. Just in the middle, letting the light blue kind of give it a bit of a halo around the outside. Loads of paint. Loads of paint. I'm not rubbing any of this in, or I'm just dropping it on top and leaving it. However it goes, that's how it goes. If I start rubbing it in like this, it's automatically going to look rubbish. And it's hard, yeah. Use the old finger again. Brilliant. Right, so keep going across there. Da, da, da. Uh, same thing, shadow uh, with reflections. Dark blue. Sketchy reflections, and they've got to be directly underneath. You need to look at the painting like head on when you're painting it. So if I'm painting it from over here, it's automatically I'll end up doing this. So I need to go head on. There we go. There we go, these little trees. Spend as much time as you like. Like I say, I'm in a hurry. Did it, there you go. Oh, that's bad, isn't it? So mistakes, here we go. Don't matter. You can either, there's loads of different, you can either paint straight on top of it. You can use the other end of the brush, which is fine. At any point, if you want to make little marks with the other end of the brush, it's fine. Sort of scrape the paint off. We can do this. That looks quite cool. As long as you keep doing it horizontally, not this wavy, no good, but just horizontally. That's the other, that's the non-brushy end of the brush. Look at that, easy. You'd be like, oh, you could do the whole thing like that. Whatever, if, whenever you're sort of happy with the effect, you don't have to use the other end of the brush, but I think it looks quite cool. Certainly for surfaces, you probably wouldn't do it so much in the sky. But um, definitely on the on the river, as long as they're horizontal lines, won't work like that. No good. They've got to be horizontal lines. Okay, then the same sort of thing. We've got the blue. We've got the dark blue on. Oh, let's finish these trees. Hold on. Uh, bit in there. Bit in there. Bit in there. Okay, and then those trees. So that's kind of done. And then. Because uh, we've got the dark blue on, um, there just needs to be some dark blue down here. So like in the darker areas, it's background, so it needs to go on first. And we're gradually going to go forward and forward. That, the last things that we're going to do will be these uh, daisies. What they're called? Oxide daisies. There we go. So oh yeah, what's I doing? Yeah, there we go. So some blue, not loads. Really thick, little dabby brush strokes, it's going to dry. If you want to scratch it in like that, that's fine. It just all adds to the kind of texture of it all. So that's it, we're halfway through the masterpiece. Join me for part two. Welcome back to part two of the Monet's uh, Flowers on the Banks of the River Seine. Um, our paint's drying out now. We've got some texture going on. Um, we just need to sort of build up the, uh, the, the sort of next phase is uh, green. So there's a couple of ways of doing that. You can, uh, old school, you can mix your uh, yellow with your blue to make green. So here's like, or you can just pour out some green which is a lot easier, or both. So we are using small brush. It's, it's tiny little brush strokes. We're basically, we're trying to build up loads and loads of texture in, these, uh, in this kind of river bank of flowers. Pretty much all going, this, all going this way up vertically. Don't be scared to use the other end of the brush as well. It's really good. Loads of paint on, loads of paint on, here we go. Like, scoop it on. It'd be amazing if I can't drip that off there. Here we go. Just put it on like that. And then just dab it like that. 
really random. Random's good. You can go a little bit Jackson Pollock on this. But what you've got to do is make sure it crosses this line of, of kind of the surface of the river. It's got to cross over. We don't want a, we don't want a big like, section of grass, section of river. It's got to cross over. So we're going to bring it up like this. Loads of little brush marks are good. This, all, this is what you um, need to get away from. So that colour green is fine. It's all the same colour. We bet, you sort of might be better off mixing in a little bit of yellow, a little bit of blue. And then we've got loads of different colours. Maybe a bit of white. Loads of different colours. Gradually we're... Um, gradually, gradually. We're getting rid of this orange sort of tint in the background. A little bit of show through. Back end of the brush is easy. You make loads of different marks without really even looking. Um, that just splashed on. That was the right result. Amazing. You can do that forever. So just keep doing that. Whenever you're sick of, I don't know, messing with the sky, more texture on the riverbank. And we're going, don't forget to cross over and go quite high up. Really, we've got some blues, we've got some greens, we've got some yellows. We've got the wrong end of the brush, we've got the right end of the brush. I'm going really fast, you can take your time. There's one on the wrong end. We're gradually getting there. So you can use a little bit of purple in there. That's green, hold on. Purple, purple's dried up. There we go, a little bit of purple in there. Right, so whilst we've got all, now we've got a load of colours all mixed up, we could do with putting in these river banks here. Any of the colours that you've got will be fine. Um, as long as it's roughly green. Uh, add a little bit of white, because things that are further away are lighter. So a little bit of white, some green, blue's cool. Um, and then we're going to just do this little bit here. We're going to cut across the horizon line here. That's a curve, so that's the river bank. If you want the river to come towards you, which you might, it's your painting. Hello, look at that. Just rub it in, doesn't matter. If you want the river to come towards you, you can have it on a slant like that. If you want the river to be wider, so more like a sea, you can have it like that. So it's kind of up to you. Monet, he had a happy medium. His line was about there. So then we just... Whatever you've got on your, on your brush, just make sure the brush strokes are going in that, in that direction, which is not quite horizontal, because it's the bank, it's going into the river, so it's just on a little bit of a kind of slant. And then of course, there's a little bit of, there's a tiny bit of reflection, but not much. Just put a tiny hint on it. And it's the same the other side. So you can go for a light, light green, it's a bit of a light yellow, that's fine. Random's good. There we go. That was really random and it worked out pretty well. You will maybe put a little bit of white on there. Don't overthink it. Um, pretty much whatever you do, as long as you've committed to it and don't scrape it all in and make it all go brown, you'll be fine. Uh, the trees, while well, we're up here, the trees do have a little bit of green on. So if you're trying to do something detailed, you can use your support pinky, which is here. And it means you just like rest your hand or your finger just on the canvas, just touch it. And it means you can go really detailed if you want to. You can go really, really detailed. You don't need to. You just do a little bit of green. green just a little bit of green on top. And if it mixes in with the blue, fine. We just want a few little bits, not loads. If, it's, if you think it's too much, you can just like dab a bit off or scrape a bit off. You just want maybe there's a bit too much green there. Anyway, it's fine. So that's the, basically, that's all the background done. Maybe there's a few little reflections in there. You might want to scrape a bit in 
or uh, you know you want to might put some white more white on top if you want it lighter and then it's this you just got to keep going whatever paint you've got just keep going more 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 depth loads of it loads of it there's no real fast way of doing it other than getting loads and loads of paint on it like that so i've got some blue i'm just going to put some green so i've got the yellow with the blue really thick look at that it's really cool that's a nice happy accident it's fine i'm just going to scoop it up scoop it up chuck it on loads of texture that looks really cool that's like quite pro Makes you look good. There we go. Loads of it. So like I said before, yellow makes things jump forward. So, um, and thick paint does so. But putting yellow paint on and thick paint, is, that's obviously at the front of the whole thing. So um, that's kind of why we're doing that. You can add little bits of red as well. Uh, don't go too crazy but it does make, it's the opposite of green, so it does make things sort of pop up a little bit. So you can use a little bit of red. Don't rub it in. I'll show you what happens if you rub it in. There you go. That's what happens if you rub it in. Bran. No good. We want, we want 100 different colours here. So don't rub it in. Oh, look, you can do it like that. That's a good thing to do. Whoops. Random, random. Okay, there we go, there we go. It's like literally loads of it on. Well, that's worked out well there. That's a nice little bit of, uh, I think we'll keep that. Um, when you look at the, um, when you look at your reference, you just gotta work it out and think, where is that? yellow area in relation to, I don't know, these trees. And as you look at it, you're thinking, oh, the, the flowers, they might sort of end here or something. That's nonsense, actually. The flowers are, all, are right up here. They're all the way up to here. So yellow flowers. Oh, I've got white flowers, hold on. Yellow flowers, really sketchy, but they go this, they go this high up. The ones in the distance, I know I've been telling you to do all the stalks like this, but when it comes to uh, flower heads, they want to be, you see, them on a sli you see them on an angle, don't you? So the flowers are pointing north, and you're seeing them like that. So they actually do want to be slightly more, well, it's gone green. I've been lazy. Get a clean brush to do that. But basically, they're up. They're as far up as this. They're not just finishing here. And you can paint, put these flowers in all over the place. Um, flowers are the last thing that we're going to do. We just need to keep piling on this paint. It's all too green over there, so we'll have a little dash of red. Um, scrape it in a bit. We can't stop until we've got rid of all of this orange. Or the, like 99% of this orange has got to go. So don't worry, you need to paint all the way around the edges. Don't leave a gap at the bottom where I have, because that'll look rubbish. It's a landscape, so it like bends all the way around, yeah? So it's got to go all the way in there. Um, there's so much paint on here now, it's going well. Maybe that's a bit too blue. It's not, it's fine. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. But don't let it go brown. So the only way it'll go brown is if you mix it all up. If you use your fingers, it could do. So I'd probably be tempted to use the other end of the brush. Um, but when you do, you've got to do it like, don't just, don't do this, because that'll look rubbish as well. Just keep with the plan and stick these, you know, the reeds or whatever they are going vertically. It's impossible to do quick, this. I'm going as quick as I can. But if you go too quick, it'll go brown. 
So you just gotta be sort of patient and it'll come, it'll keep coming. And eventually we'll have it. I'm hardly using any water on this because I want whatever paint, whatever paint we've got on the palette, just like it's sort of half mixed up. Um, just chuck it on. I've got about 15 different colours there or just by scooping it up. There we go. So now we're getting there slowly. We're getting there. Right. In there. Don't forget to paint around the edges as well. That's it. Okay. So I'm looking at this now and I'm sort of s slanting my eyes a bit. I'm sort of squinting. And I'm looking at it, and it's good because it's like white, light, dark, da da da. And I'm squinting my eyes up like that. I can't, this bit's all the same colour, or it's the same tone, so it's the same sort of depth of black. So we don't want that. So we need to put something light on top of it to break that up. That's broken it up, essentially. Right, winning, winning. It's so all going a little bit brown, a little bit brown on my palette, so maybe just like get some fresh paint out. Um, maybe get some fresh green. The stalks, okay, the stalks that are coming up here are going to be really thin. You can't have like big brush thick stalks here, not like, it's just like wispy bits of grass. So. The sketchier, the better. See that? Yeah, hold on. Might be a good time to use a bit of water if you want to go detail. If you use a little bit of water on your brush and then the same thing. So there's water on here, it's dripping off. And then you can just pinch it. And look at that, it's like a chisel. So if you wanted to do some really kind of fine detail stuff, you know, you might want to use your support pinky again and you might want a tight, really sort of thin, you know, you might want to do that. If you've got all afternoon, you can do that for the whole thing. Really fine. And now it's all, now it's gone thick again. You just get this, you just get this and pinch it. There you go. Okay, so we're getting there. Keep doing that, keep doing that, keep doing that. You can't really paint it enough. You can't put too much paint on. Impossible. You can put too much paint on and mix it, mix it all together and it'll go brown, that's no good. Uh, but so long as you're putting things next to each other, um, you'll be fine, you'll be fine. Right, I think this is kind of getting there. See, look, I'm rushing it now. Look, all gone brown. All gone brown, no good. So get, break it up. There we go. Right, so we're getting there, we're getting there. Um, how's it looking? So squint your eyes up to see how it's looking. It needs a burst of, well, there's another good way of cheat. If you put a little, if you put some water on it, and you just let it all dribble down. You don't have to worry too much about um, getting it vertical. Uh, gravity will sort that out for you. Not loads of it, it's just a little option for covering things fast. You can just do it like that. Just gives a little bit of extra, well, speed. <laughs> so doing it. Okay, don't forget to paint around the outside. Don't forget to paint around the outside here. Okay, we're getting there, we're getting there. What do we need to do? We need to jump the whole thing forward just by putting the flowers in. Easy, and you can't put enough flowers in. There's millions of them. If you look at the reference, there's, I don't know, there's hundreds and hundreds of them. They're really small. There'll be probably, I don't know, half a dozen, 10, Bigger ones, but right at the bottom. 
So like these ones right at the bottom, things that are closer to you are bigger, things that are further away, smaller. Um, let's, let's do it. So we need some, a little bit of clean paint because we're doing these, I don't know what they're called, buttercups. I don't know what they are. They're not buttercups, are they? Yellow flowers, yellow flowers. Um, so that's just bright yellow. We're going to do daisies. I do know these are called oxide daisies. So we've got the white there. We need small brush. We need clean small brush. That's it, so we cleaned it up. Okay. Now, you'll like this. This is the course kind of finishing touches. So, I don't know, there's loads of different ways of doing it. Uh, get yourself a nice color. I'm gonna use the yellow to start with. I might make it a tiny bit lighter. You don't have to. Lighter, just add white. And then, um, to get them delicate, the flower, delicate flowers, hold your paintbrush like that. So hold it between your finger and your thumb. And you can paint loads of flowers really, really quickly by just letting it just tap. As soon as it, as soon as it touches the uh, canvas, you're gonna get really small specks of yellow on there. And you can make, oh, see, that's a weird long flower, isn't it? We'll sort that one out later. You just sort of tap it on. Loads more paint, so we've got, we've got a load of it on there like that. And then um, horizontally, just like drop it on like that. And you get loads on, loads on, loads on, loads on, loads on. Add a so yeah, I mean, you can do this forever. You can do this forever. We've got some more flowers down here. We've got all these sort of textures now, because when we were scraping it in before, um, this, that's starting to dry out. So you can kind of scrape that in, and then it's all going quite well. It's all going brilliant, actually. There we go. Some up there. Now, some of these flowers have got stalks. All the flowers have got stalks, but they're so thin you can't see them, so you don't that like gives them massive tree trunk stalks that are going to go to the end of the flowers, just leave them. It's an impressionist, isn't he? So that's it. All right. So you can do this forever. Uh, we'll have some yellow flowers over here as well, because we sort of neglected that, bit, uh, that area a little bit. Same thing, just finger and finger of thumb, just like dab it on like that. There you go, easy. Aye, aye. Okay. Get a little bit of red, dip it in the yellow. A little bit of red, dip it in the yellow. That'll make you orange. And just to give it a little bit of extra life, some orange is in there as well. There'll be some orangey sort of flowers, not loads. Like, that's probably enough. And it's, it's random, so it's like end of the brush and it's, it's fingering it's just a little bit of randomness going on in there. But you'll see, so like, these little bits of red next to this green just jumps the whole thing forward. Just jumps the whole, if you, I mean, if you put red over here, it would jump that forward and it would look weird, but the foreground's gonna be just tiny, not loads, just tiny little specks of it. Orange or red. There we go, we're getting there, we're getting there. Just neglecting over it, is it too far to reach? There we go. A little bit of blue in there, that's some yellows. Okay, that's going to be fine. Squint your eyes up again, and if there's any bits that you see that, oh, there's a problem, or there's a big blocky bit, that's, that's not working for me. So when I squint my eyes up, I can see this here. That just needs sorting out with, uh, it just needs some white on top of it. That's gone now. There you go. Squinted it, oh, it's gone. Um, okay, then we'll just do the daisies. 
this is like the finishing, the finishing touch, the finishing touch. You can do as many daisies as you like. Um, you can concentrate on like f uh, five by doing each petal, petal, petal. I'm not sure how many they are, they've got a few. But put um, loads of paint on and just commit to it. So you've got, oh. yeah, there you go. So just do, just do a few with actual petals, then the rest of them, same. Just dod, just dap it on. Um, wherever it lands, that's it. Because if you start messing around with it, you've got to kind of do all the background again. So wherever it lands, that's it. So you just do it once and leave it, once and leave it. Try and make it, put loads of paint on, so that, and let it just catch the canvas. Don't do da 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 da, make them all, um, you know, equally spaced, because we need it random. Okay, there's quite a few knocking around there. They're good, they're good, they're good, they're good, they're good. A bit over there. Right, here's the thing that happens, is if you're not go, if you haven't got enough paint on, it copies. So if you've got, see all of these marks are all the same. Um, kind of all right, but not over the whole thing. You want random. So I'm just gonna reload, reload. There you go, and you can like, you can actually paint these all day. And if you don't like them, paint some grass over them. Here's the finishing touches. We're all, we've almost cracked it. Monet, easy, we've almost cracked it. This is the best bit, I reckon. Get a little brush, clean it. You get the most vibrant, um, most vibrant orange as you can. So that's yellow and a tiny bit of red, really vibrant, mostly yellow, so maybe like 10% 10 10 red, something like that. And then you can just, where you've got some of those daisies, not all of them, just dab a bit up. There you go, just a few of those and that's the middle of the daisies. Don't do loads, don't overdo it. There you go, that's the best bit. We're done. That's Monet. Sign it. Ed. Sign it, Monet, if you like. So that was it, Monet. How easy was that? Join me next time for another masterpiece.